Book it all covering. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching FNN Fact News Network. And uh, just like yourself, we saw this news probably about 3 a.m. because we were still in the process of editing the uh, broadcast that we posted on Israeli News Live. And uh, U.S. General, excuse me, U.S. kills Iran's most powerful general in Baghdad airstrike there. Uh, I, I've already saw that my own source there in the Middle East has reached out to me, was working on this, trying to confirm these things, uh, not just uh, throw it out there on the air, but uh, as we got up this morning, uh, we also saw that, yes, it's still going on. The issue is uh, seemingly has been confirmed, but not just the, uh, not just the Iranians' uh, most powerful general there, uh, but also... Uh, we have, uh, let me get over here to get, well, this article is, just speaks about uh, uh, Abu Mahdi al Mahandes, <clears throat> who was also killed. Now, he is the head of the militia in Iraq, and uh, both these men were killed inside of Iraq, which kind of lets you know that the Iranians were behind the, uh, the, the current situation at the U.S. Embassy, and this would be one reason why the U.S. would probably target them. Uh, but nonetheless, it was a major blow, major setback for Iran, and of course, the militia leader vows revenge. Uh, that's the militia leader there in Iraq, says here, and this is on um, IOL.co.za, Militia leader vows revenge against U.S. Israel over killing of Kasami, uh, Kasami Soleimani and Abu Mahdi al Mahandes. And I may get these pronunciations wrong. That's a mouthful of words right there. It says, anyway, the head of an Iraqi militia backed by Iran vows revenge against the United States and Israel after the killing of top Iranian general and the Iraqi militia leader in an attack in Baghdad. In return for the blood of the martyr of Abu Mahdi uh, al Mahandes is the elimination of all U.S. military presence in Iraq. Uh, Qas al Khazali, the leader of the Iraqi pro Iranian militia Asaib Asa, uh, al Haq, says in a statement In return for the blood of the martyr of Qasami Soleimani, uh, is the elimination of all of Israel from existence. Well, uh, you know, that just tells me right there, uh, the U.S., Israel will get their wish. As we were reporting to you a little while back there, there was a uh, push to retake Iraq. They had lost control of the political situation there on the ground, so they are pushing now to take Iraq back with the movements they were doing. Moving ISIS into that territory was one of the key uh, uh, issues for the U.S. Uh, in doing so. And, uh, and of course, you know, I also saw a, a mention in another, broad, in another brief there, I haven't had a chance to look at it yet, that the Turkish military is moving troops over into Libya. Uh, and listen, <clears throat> you have to understand, that's a calculated move. Uh, that is a NATO move. Uh, don't kid yourself. This is not, and, and if the Americans act like, let me just see if I can pull this up here. Uh, real quick there, Turkey uh, and Libya, that lets me know that we're really seriously about to go to war with Iran. Uh, that's a very serious situation if, if indeed Turkey is moving, and let's see, I think I've got it right here, uh, News 24 South Africa, uh, I think they're reporting this here, uh, let's see. Nope, that's not it either. And let me just see if I can find it real quick. This very serious news there to hear. Uh, Turkey has indicated that it will intervene military in Libya. Uh, just different people are, are, are responding on these things, these, these uh, allegations as of right now. And I'm just trying to see if we can get anything. Um, okay, looks like the New York Times. So let's just pull this up. Okay, Turkey flexing its muscle will send troops to Libya, a new wrinkle in the battle for an oil-rich country, and a signal from President Erdogan that Turkey aims to be a power, power broker in a volatile region. All right? Now, don't kid yourself. 
it's not so much that he would he just wants to go there to become uh, the new warlord of the Middle East that's that's fake news what is he there for he is there because if the United States along with Israel have to confront Iran and Iraq simultaneously because I don't think the US was planning on getting into a, a confrontation with both uh, Iran and Iraq at the same time but that could very well happen as a result because Iran and Iraq may ally together and this could really turn into a major confrontation and a war for the United States and then, of course, Libya, who they've already overthrown. Libya, part of that plan, as you remember, General Wesley Clark saying those seven nations had to be taken down in five years. All of them are on track. Iran is the last one to fold. And so, therefore, they need Turkey to put troops in Libya to keep, uh, to, to prepare the way for the war they're about to fight with Iran. And I can tell you, friends, for a long time I've been saying, when you see America go to war with Iran, that's when our days are numbered here. Uh, that was some of the intel I was getting out of Israel. That would kind of be like the, uh, the red herring, if you would, uh, to let you know that, all right, a war goes down with Iran, but what's going to happen in America? Now, we would say... Vladimir Putin is allied with Iran, and he is. But he's also allied with Israel. So who becomes the, the enemy in this case if Israel is going to help the U.S. with Iran? It's going to be the U.S., not Israel. He's not going to strike against Israel. So you have to watch these alliances and how they're going on. That's the way I see it playing out. And it's not going to look good. The Times of Israel, they, like I said, they also brought it out. U.S. kills powerful Iranian general Qasami Soleimani in Baghdad airstrike, right? There, uh, they say here in their article here, General Soleimani was actively developing plans to attack American diplomats and service members in Iraq and throughout the region. It said General Soleimani and his uh, coup forces were responsible for the deaths of hundreds of American and the coalition service members and the wounding of thousands more. The Iraqi official uh, said the strike also killed the Abu Mahdi al-Mahandis, the deputy commander of the Iran-backed militias known as the Popular Mobilization Forces. Iran, Iran State Television said the attack was carried out by U.S. helicopters. Two vehicles were attacked with missiles by U.S. forces, and 10 passengers, including Soleimani, were martyred. Iran ambassadors to the Iraq uh, uh, Irayi Masayadi told state <clears throat> television. Anyway, this is what they're, they're saying there. It's going to turn in. This is that last key important part is the war with Iran. What does that mean for us here in America? Uh, it's hard to say right now. It's hard to say. Um, one would be when does the war go down? Secondly, when will they decide that Russia gets involved to strike back at the United States? All this is staged events. And I, can, I, I really see Russia will not strike at first. They want to see Iran come down to its knees before Russia kicks in. You have to understand, you have to look at this in the mindset of a new world order. With Jerusalem the headquarters, and in order for this all to play out, to bring about a false messiah, you've got to play the cards just right. Turkey moves their troops into Libya. That's what they're going to do. That'll give the U.S. forces the ability to go fight this war. They, uh, the U.S. cannot afford to have too many fronts at one time. So it frees up American assets to deal with Iran, because not only Iran, they're going to have to deal with the internal problem with Iraq. And Syria is still going on. Syria, Iraq, and Iran may ally together. But you've got to remember, Syria is on a tight leash with Russia. They got Putin is keeping Bashar al-Assad on a tight leash. He will try to keep Syria out of this battle. 
Because after all, what they need to have happen is that the U.S. takes out, starts to take the war down with Iran. In the process, we'll probably suffer a lot of losses in Iraq. Doing so, they'll regain Iraq. They will begin to cripple down Iran. When Iran is crippled down enough to where they can't regain a foothold, then Russia will come in like the great ally of Iran after Iran is crippled to its knees. Then Russia will say, that's our ally, enough is enough, and a limited nuclear strike will be done on the United States to cripple the United States. The U.S. will retaliate against Russia and will send some nukes into Russia, crippling Russia. Now that Iran is crippled, Iraq is now sent into a third world nation, can't even rebuild from the war it's already been in. Syria is already in, in totally demolished. The Turks are taking care of Libya. The U.S. has now become to its own knees with the war with Russia, and Russia too has suffered massive losses from nuclear strikes on its continent. Limited, though, keep in mind, this is what Israeli intelligence was telling me, it'll be a limited nuclear strike. Then what's going to happen? Where are we going to be at then? Now they can bring in the New World Order. China will be the strongest military in the world. They're pumping out ships like crazy. Israeli intelligence had shared with me that China would become the New World Superpower. Why? They're going to bring in communism around the globe. Trump would then probably become a dictator here as long as he's still in office. Who knows? I don't know what will happen to Trump in the end. Maybe he'll be whisked off to China. I know his family will be because while they, the kids have been stuttering, stu uh, studying uh, Mandarin. Why would, why would Trump's grandchildren be studying Mandarin? Do they know this is where they're going to be going as part of this new world order to these ghost cities that have already been built, prepared for them, while they clean up the ashes and disarm America? And they're trying to send this country into a civil unrest to cause so much chaos that while we got a war going on with Iran, we're over here fighting within ourselves. Everything is playing out right to the letter. People are easily manipulated by emotion. That's the sad truth of it. Anyway, check out Israeli News Live. Uh, Yana and Steve chat there. We were discussing about the, uh, the, 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 the mm, I call it wolves in sheep's clothing. Beware of strange doctrines, though. All right, that's what it's all about there because in the messianic groups there, they are really pushing right now to put Christians under Talmudic rule. At any rate, got a lot in store for you. I'll be also be doing on Patreon today a video going deeper into this um, this whole issue about Zechariah 28. And um, uh, so we'll be talking about that there. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching FNN, Fact News Network.